Hello everyone. Have you heard about the autopilot of the airplanes? Some people say that with this autopilot, operating the airplanes without pilots is technically possible from takeoff all the way down to landing. And they even say pilots are sleeping or even sometimes playing poker game in the cockpit during the flight. Hmm, I don't play poker game. Today, I'm going to tell you what the autopilot does during the flight and how important it is and what some people are seriously mistaken about the autopilot. I'm Captain JK and I'm flying Boeing 787 as a captain. Well, someday in the future, pilots will be no longer needed in the cockpit, but not today and nobody knows when it will be because it's not even close. If I'm being honest, the autopilot system in modern airliners is really smart and very accurate. It can do not only basic flying like climb and descend, turning and level flight, but also tracking the route of flight precisely which was pre-programmed by a pilot. It seems like the autopilot is really capable of full automatic operation, doesn't it? Here, I've got two critical reasons why pilots must have it on during the flight. Airspace restrictions. The volume of the air traffic has got insanely larger than it used to be. What does it have to do with this autopilot? Let's take a look at the width of the airways. When I was a first officer in MD-80 around 1998, it used to be 10 nautical miles or 8 nautical miles depending on the types of the airways. It means that the airplanes could be anywhere within this 10 nautical miles. Actually, the navigation system accuracy was not as good as modern airplanes. Now, though the definition of it basically hasn't changed, pilots have to be right on the center line of the airways. What this means is that the airplane has to be flown much more accurately. As you may have noticed, GPS makes it possible to be that accurate. So the autopilot is strongly recommended to meet the requirements of the regulations. Okay, this time let's go into the vertical separation of the airplanes. It used to be 2,000 feet between airplanes coming in opposite directions and 4,000 feet with the traffic going in the same direction. Now, it's got half of it, 1,000 and 2,000. This system is called RVSM, Reduced Vertical Separation Minimums. And this system requires quite many options from aircraft, and autopilot is one of them. In other words, it's mandatory to use for being in this airspace. In almost all the airspaces, this is applied. System Monitoring Airplane is made of more than millions of different parts, and they are very complicated and sophisticated. As science is rapidly developing, lots of brilliant automation systems have been being implanted into the airplanes. I guess you may notice a lot of people have lost their jobs due to this automation. Do you know that there used to be five crew members in the cockpit many years ago? Captain, First officer, flight engineer, navigator, and communicator. Now, only two men left in the cockpit. Depending on the situation, captain and first officer have to be able to take two or three different roles at the same time. Let's suppose that one of them is flying manually. Only one man left in the cockpit, and he or she can help dealing with everything but flying. In terms of workload management, this is absolutely not safe even in normal condition, let alone emergency. Now I'm going to tell you about three things that autopilot can't do. Takeoff. People might think that takeoff is a lot easier than landing. So do pilots, if nothing happens. Autopilot can do auto landing and it's fully automatic and it's beautifully done. Then, why auto takeoff is not possible yet? 
Have you heard about reject takeoff? Reject. Speed brakes up. Reverse is normal. Top jet one, Papa Charlie stopping on runway two three right. This is to discontinue the takeoff since something happened during takeoff roll, and it's so critical that the captain must immediately apply the memory items in order to stop the airplane on the runway safely. Captain has a full authority for discontinuing the takeoff even if the first officer is taking off. This reflects it is one of the most critical maneuvers. We pilots practice this every six months in the simulator and have to pass the check ride. Aside from this, there are so many safety considerations during takeoff. If one of the engines fails at very high speed, the plane must be airborne safely with one engine inoperative. Sometimes more takeoff thrust should be added by pilots, or sometimes airplane should be lifted off earlier than its schedule. Not yet the autopilot is ready for all these things. Weather deviation. There is almost nothing that is not important among onboard equipments. Weather radar is one of the most important onboard devices. This important device reflects thunderstorm clouds called CB on the pilot's instrument. Airplane is not to fly through this CB clouds. It is extremely dangerous to get into it. Although this radar has been developed with high-tech engineering, still pilots should analyze and estimate the distance and direction to go around the clouds CB. If you're interested, you may refer to this video. That one is about the clouds with Air France crash into Atlantic Ocean due to unintended entry to CB. Coordination with other traffic. Due to so many airplanes are flying around at the same time in the same area, flights are frequently interrupted by ATC. For this reason, even if the autopilot is capable of climb, descend, or approach to land, pilots continuously talk to ATC and manipulate the airplane with switches on the autopilot control panel. Sometimes you have to stop climbing and fly lower altitude for a long time, and then pilots have to find other options to save fuel. Because the airplane should fly at its optimum altitude for fuel efficiency. As opposed to former case, Sometimes we have to wait for descent since traffic below us is passing by. Then later on, we have to dive to catch up with the flight profile. And sometimes ATC instructs pilots to change their route for some reason. There are too many cases to mention where pilots have to intervene. Okay, today I've given you kind of relationship between pilots and the autopilot. It goes without saying that it is really useful and in some ways it became inevitable for modern airline operations. But it is just that two pilots are still essentially required for flight safety. And the autopilot is one of the best friends of pilots. I'm Captain JK. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Bye bye.